Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to rebuild your slave cylinder and bleed your hydraulic clutch system on KTM and Husqvarna motorcycles. If you're watching this video, chances are you do need to rebuild the slave cylinder on your motorcycle. If you're not sure if you need to do that yet, we do have a diagnostic video on hydraulic clutch systems, so be sure to check that out. Now, a few things that I do wanna point out on this is that these bikes do take a couple different types of fluids depending what bike you have. It could be brake fluid or you could be using mineral oil in the clutch system. So be sure to reference your model specific service manual for that information. Now, the newer Huskies have a Magura slave cylinder on them. They've been known to have issues and we do offer a rebuild kit for them. But if you wanna upgrade that, we do offer the Recluse upgrade on our website. It fits these manual style clutches. But if you do need to rebuild your slave cylinder, it's a similar procedure for most KTMs and Huskies. We'll show you how to on this 2019 450 XCF. And we also have a Magura slave cylinder already on our bench and we'll show you how to go through that as well. To do this job, we'll use some common hand tools, rags, safety glasses, some rubber gloves, a drain pan, and for parts, we have a few different options. We've got all balls rebuild kits available, Pro X rebuild kits. We're gonna go with the all balls for today. We also have this syringe for bleeding the hydraulic system. This is available from KTM under the OEM diagram on our website. Our bike takes brake fluid. We can use either the DOT4 or the 5.1. The manual gives us the option. And keep in mind, if your manual says to use the mineral oil, you'll definitely wanna make sure you're running that. The first step is to remove the master cylinder cap. And I like to put a rag around this just to keep any brake fluid from spilling out. Now most bikes won't have this protective cover over the stator. Ours does, so we'll need to remove it. Next, we'll remove the air filter cover. All right, next, we'll remove this bolt right here. This is going into our chain guard. Next, I'm gonna loosen these three bolts right here on the slave cylinder, but I'm not gonna remove them yet. And what we'll do, we'll loosen up this bleeder, we'll put a hose on it, and we'll let all of the fluid drain out that can be drained out. Now we've drained out as much as we can right now out of this bleeder. So I'm gonna take a rag to catch any oil that might spill and I'm gonna set my tool right there. We'll take the wrench off and then we're gonna loosen this banjo bolt up right here. To loosen the banjo bolt up, I'm gonna remove this rubber protector. That way we can get the box end on the bolt and we'll loosen that up. You might lose just a little more fluid. So again, I'm gonna have a rag right here and we'll remove the hydraulic line. There's two copper crush washers here we'll keep track of. Our new kit did come with new ones, so we'll put those on later on. Now this hydraulic line might spill a few drops of hydraulic fluid, so I'm just gonna wrap it in a rag and tuck it out of the way. And then what we'll do, we'll remove the three bolts holding the slave cylinder in place and this chain guard. With the slave cylinder off, I'm gonna turn it upside down and help drain any fluid that didn't come out already. So what we'll do now is take this slave cylinder apart and clean it up. I'm gonna start by removing this gasket We'll set that aside. We also have an O-ring behind that gasket. This rubber piece right here is not part of the rebuild kit. You'll need to be really careful with it. And it sits down in a groove on the body of the slave cylinder. So we're just gonna pop it up out of that groove. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna face this slave cylinder down 
I'm going to take a little bit of compressed air. So what we did with the compressed air is we blew this piston out of the slave cylinder body. And what we'll do now, we'll remove the spring from the top. Then there's this O-ring. And this is actually what's sealing everything. We'll remove that and then we're going to clean up these parts. So this one right here, we don't want to get the contact cleaner on this rubber. We're just going to wipe it down. If your gasket's stuck, you can use a gasket scraper, but if it didn't stick, I'll just use some contact cleaner and get this cleaned up. So we went ahead and took the brake fluid cap and filled it up with brake fluid. What we'll do now, we'll take this new O-ring that came in our kit, we'll dip it into that brake fluid. So what we'll do now, we'll take this spring. This is a new spring in the kit. We'll set it into place and I'm going to leave this here. Take the slave cylinder body and I'm actually going to wipe a little bit of brake fluid on the inside right here. That way everything will slide together real smooth. But I'm putting this spring and piston facing down right now so the spring stays in place while we assemble everything. And I'll just work that on nice and easy. So now we'll go ahead and push this protective grommet down into place. Now to make sure we did everything right, I'm going to push down on this piston and you'll make sure it returns back out. Now that we know the slave cylinder works okay, I'm going to set it aside and I'm going to show you a little bit about the Husky style Magura slave cylinder. Now this is the Magura slave cylinder used on the newer Huskies. The process is going to be pretty similar on everything. Just like on the other one, we can use compressed air to get this piston out of place. But on this one, I've kind of pumped out that fluid. You, you can pull up on this rubber grommet. And this one I can actually pull out by hand. So if it doesn't come out easy by hand, that's when you can use that compressed air on it. So as you can see, the rebuild process will be the same for this, except for the kit on these Magura style clutches come with the complete piston assembly. So all you need to do is take that new piston, put a little bit of the hydraulic fluid on it, and slide it the same way we did on the other piston. So what I'm going to do now is take our syringe, I'm going to put this hose onto it, I'm going to suck up a little bit of fluid. I'm going to take this slave cylinder and I'm going to bench bleed it. We're just going to add a little bit of fluid right here. Try to get all the air out that we can. I'm just going to press on this piston a couple times. If you press really hard, it's going to squirt the fluid everywhere. So just be careful with that. And I'm just going to work that piston until all the bubbles are done coming out and then I'll top it off. So that's looking pretty good right there. I'm just going to take my rag with my other hand, clean up this gasket sealing surface right here. And the other thing I'll do, I'm going to wipe this banjo bolt fitting, reinstall the O-ring onto the slave cylinder. Then we'll take our new gasket, we'll install that, and then we're actually going to install the slave cylinder right now. And when you do that, make sure that push rod is still in its place. Now our kit did come with some new bolts, so I'm going to use those. And it's got the two shorter bolts in the kit, go in this front hole and the bottom one. And then that longer bolt's going to go through the chain guard. So I'll put that on in a second. Now I'll take these old banjo bolt crush washers off and we'll clean up this banjo bolt. Next I'll install the new crush washers onto the banjo bolt. So we'll put one on top and then one underneath. Then we'll loosely install this for now, and I'm going to mount the chain guard back up and put that top bolt back into the slave cylinder.
Make sure to torque these to your manufacturer's specifications. All right, now the slave cylinder is tightened down. So what we'll do is tighten down the banjo bolt fitting. Next, we'll open the bleeder and you'll want to open at least a quarter of a turn. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take our syringe. I've got this extra piece of tubing right here. I'm going to put that onto it. This is going to fit our bleeder screw a little bit better. And we'll fill this syringe with the recommended clutch fluid. So I just pushed all the air out of the syringe all the way coming up. So you want to make sure you do that and just have it all drain into a drip pan. And then once all the air is out, I'm going to hook it onto our bleeder fitting. And what we're going to do, we're just going to push this fluid up until it starts coming into our master cylinder reservoir. So the fluid's going into our master cylinder reservoir now. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this bleeder fitting down. We're going to check that out and I'm going to try to make sure all the bubbles are out from the master cylinder. If you need to keep pumping fluid up, you may need to start sucking some of the fluid out of there if bubbles keep coming out. So I'm just going to work the clutch lever and try to help any remaining air bubbles come out. Now this method is known as reverse bleeding. This is how the KTM manual will show you to do it and it worked really well for us. We just had to work that handle a couple times and it's feeling pretty good. So we're just about done, but if you're having troubles getting all the bubbles out of the system, sometimes you can pull the slave cylinder off and work that piston just a little bit and it'll help any bubbles work out of the top. So now that our lever is feeling good, we can remove the syringe. We'll install the new rubber cap that came in our rebuild kit then we'll go up to the master cylinder and reinstall our cap after we check the level of the fluid. Now we'll go ahead and top off the clutch fluid reservoir about four millimeters from the top. And that's when the reservoir is level. Next, making sure the sealing surface is clean, we'll reinstall the reservoir cap. Be careful not to over tighten these screws. They just need to be snug. Now, if you do strip them out, we have a great video on that. Now, keep in mind that brake fluid is corrosive to painted parts. So if you spilled any brake fluid, you'll want to clean it up as soon as possible. We're going to use a little contact cleaner on the side of our engine here. If you don't have that, you can use some soap and water. And while we're down here, we'll go ahead and throw this air filter cover back on. Now we'll remove the rag from around our master cylinder. We'll wipe up any spilled hydraulic fluid and it's really that simple to rebuild the slave cylinder on your KTM or Husky motorcycle. If you need these parts, they're available on our website. And if you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have a ton of other helpful videos on there. Thanks for watching.